How did you get into the actual making these uh, physical, well, phys- yeah, physical robots? Yeah. Um, I don't know when the for the idea first came to me. I mean, like, what do they call designer toys or art toys are not a new thing. You know, like, right. um, that's something a lot of uh, artists just strictly make their career on, period. It's just doing that. And I've always thought that was a fascinating thing. Um <laughs> Part of me, though, is always thinking of, like, merchandising. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I make these cute little robots, and then I was like, oh, that could easily translate to um, a toy, right? Um, it can, but then I was like, oh, you know, the, the tools that I have available for me can't really make, like, a, a toy toy, you know, for a kid. It just won't stand up to the abuse being played with. But right. I could make an art toy, right? Something that somebody's going to look at and appreciate and sit on their shelf and collect. Um, so I got into it, I think, 2017. I did a Kickstarter where I created a um, a six-inch tall action figure. Um, oh, six-inch. Wow. Okay. Yeah, kind of based on my um, uh, uh, illustrations of robots. Um, and yeah, that was funded through Kickstarter and that was, um, that was an experience cause I wasn't really prepared to, for, with all, what all that took. It's like, okay, all right, I got the money now. Like, okay, now how do I get this thing actually produced and then get it fulfilled and that kind of thing. What was the final um, goal by the way? The- I can't, it wasn't a great deal. I think I might've had like $5,000 total or something like okay. that, but you know, it was enough to get this thing, um, made properly and, um, uh, distributed properly yeah i was gonna say when you when you say made you're saying mass produced Mm -hmm. okay right and um not mass mass produced you know i had a a uh, a resin artist out in southern california um uh mold and cast all these for me i developed the uh the prototype using um 3d uh modeling software and got a print out for him and sent him like you know the prototype parts which he used to mold and then he casted uh all the toys for me Okay. And you, so you did do it through resin. Uh, I wasn't sure if you were doing 3d printing or resin, right. or, I guess well, 3d printing would take way longer, wouldn't it? Well, so now, um, I, all the, the, the toys I create now I have what's, <clears throat> so let me back up a little bit. Yeah, no problem. Um, <laughs> Tell me summer, all about it. <laughs> sure. Last summer about this time I, um, acquired a 3d resin printer for, oh. and I was like, all right, well, let me see what I can do with this. The cost to entry was pretty low. So really I thought, well, this is something I could, cause ever since I did that, that, that run with my first Kickstarter robot, I was like, man, I wish I could do this myself in a more efficient manner. Um, you know, <laughs> control the means production, so to speak. So, um, after that I had ended up getting like your standard, uh, 3d fil- filament printer and tried making some robots. Um, and it worked okay, but it just wasn't very fast and just wasn't very efficient. And the robots at the end of the day also were just not pretty fragile uh, okay. for what I was trying to do with them, which was make, you know, some like maybe three or four inch opposable, like limited opposability uh, toys there. So I put, you know, that didn't, I played with that for a while and didn't really work out. So a couple of years later, um, I ended up getting this 3D resin printer and then I, started uh, printing out some prototypes for myself to see how it worked. And then the idea came to me. I was like, okay, what about a robot of the month club, right? Yes. Yeah. It would be a subscription box where, well, not really a box, but (laughs) you get a new robot designed by me in the mail each month. Um, And I just kind of threw it out there. You know, I built a website around that idea, Mm -hmm. um, printed out, you know, a stack of models. And I was like, all right, well, I'll just throw it out there in the world and see what happens, you know, see if I get any subscribers. And it just kind of took off and it just keeps, seems to keep growing each month. So, which is a good day and a bad thing because, um, like I haven't really set aside from like sketching ideas for the robot coming up next month. You know, I haven't been able to really paint or draw anything seriously just because my time is all focused on, making the new robot each month and getting that fulfilled. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's been fun though. I, I enjoy it. It's just, um, it's definitely a, um, a creative 
drive. Like I used to tell other people when they ask me about like how how do you create so much artwork? Like speaking of like the paintings and drawings, mm -hmm. and usually the way to, for me to do that for myself was to either like book a show or book a festival or something mm -hmm. like that, knowing that like I have basically like a deadline and a goal that has to get fulfilled. Um, because otherwise, like I think I just I would think a lot about doing the art, but not so much about actually <laughs> not actually doing it. Right. Um, but having like you know uh, something that needs to be, get a goal that needs to get met. Um, you know that that's the drive that you know requires me to like okay I got to do this you know I've already signed up for it you know so I've got to get this thing done.